So tonight I watched um, Marissa Silver's 1990 film Vital Signs. Marissa Silver is the daughter of Joan McLynn Silver who did Hazy, was it Hazy Shade of Winter? What is it? Oh, hey, uh, Hazy Days of Winter? Oh, God. I don't remember what it's called. Um, I did not like the movie. That's why I can't remember it. Hazy Shade of Winter. Yes. Um, she also did uh, Hester Street. Hester Street is really, really good film. Um, Hazy Shade of Winter is not. Or at least I really hated it when I saw it. Anyways, so this is her daughter, um, who's mostly known for her film um, Old Enough, which came out in 1984, and it was um, premiered at Sundance, and she won like, the Grand Jury Prize, I think. So this one is based on, it's, uh, it's basically, like, imagine watching an hour and 40 minute long episode of Grey's Anatomy, um, but boring, and with actually naked people when they have sex. That's basically this movie. Um, I didn't really like it. I liked Diane Lane. I always liked Diane Lane. I will never not like Diane Lane in a movie. Diane Lane is a flawless human being and should be in every movie. Always. Except they had her in it with a really weird hair color. It didn't really flatter her face. Um, and Adrian Pazdar, who like never quite became a huge star and then he was on Heroes. Um, and Jimmy Smits as like the head of surgery or something. Um, and Jane Addams, who's, like, always the weird friend that can't get laid. And, um, a whole bunch of other people whose names I don't remember. Um, and Bradley Whitford as the asshole, because Bradley Whitford always plays the asshole. It was just, like, one of those movies that they don't make movies like this anymore because it's too expensive to make movies that have no point. <laughs> like, it's just a group of people going through third year med school And there's, a, like, a case thrown in there. It really felt like an episode of Grey's Anatomy. Like, but I was like, oh, at least Grey's Anatomy is really sassy. Um, just watch it if you love Diane Lane or Jamie Smiths and, or Adrian Pazdar. I'm sure he has some fans. Completists of those people's filmographies will enjoy it. Everyone else, you can skip this one. Um, I'm interested in Marissa Silver's early film. I haven't seen it. I need to find, a, find it somewhere. Um, the one thing this movie uh, had going for it was there were a few scenes. Oh, oh, wait. It also had La Laura San Giacomo. So if you're a Laura San Giacomo fan, she's really good in this. She's another one who's always good. Um, the one thing it had going, or two things it had going for it, was there were a couple of observational moments uh, where the women were like, hey, I'm going to call you out on your sexism. And, and that was nice. But it was like... They called it out, but then, and then what? And there was no and then what, which is sort of, like, you're trying, but you're not really commenting. Um, but there was one sex scene between Diane, spoiler alert, between Diane Lane and um, Adrian Pazdar where they were super naked. Like, I can't remember if I've seen Diane Lane's boobs before, but I will never forget them. Oh, wait, no, I have. I've seen, what am I talking about? She's very naked in um, A Walk on the Moon which I've watched every year for the past decade on Valentine's Day. Um, she has very nice boobs. Where was I going with this? Oh, but, okay, so normally in a sex scene where people are super naked, right, you usually have, like, the camera panning on the woman's body and panning on, like, the man groping, right? That's usually what you get. In this, they panned the heck on Adrian Pazdar's, like, really nice back and then they like had all these cuts of Diane Lane like like tracing the line of his back and then like groping his butt and I I appreciated that um because it was unexpected and it's like that was there for the ladies and the gay men's and we're all very happy that Marissa Silver gave us that because it was nice and he has a real nice butt um so yes if you like butts it's a good butt scene um, there wasn't enough Diane Lane. Like, they focused on the dudes, which kind of bummed me. I would have, I was more interested in all three of the women that were in this movie. I was like, just give me a movie about, instead of the dude whose wife is like, ugh, you're not spending enough time with me. Instead of focusing on him, let's focus on the wife at the 
we're at her job being neglected and let's focus on the woman who might have wanted to be um, a surgeon but was basically told nope and let's focus on the girl who like is flipping out like I, it's way more interesting stories than men competing we don't need another movie about men competing to be the most man the man to ever man you know what I mean Ugh. that's because the screenplay was written by men though so you know they I think Marissa Silver certainly tried to inject a lot of uh, a lot more for the women in this story but she can only do so much uh, I watched this on MaxGo. It's it's available to the end of the month. So 1990s Vital Signs, directed by Marissa Silver.